So you're looking for some help with adding and subtracting fractions. Well, I want to explain it the best way that I know how without making it so basic that it's just going to be boring. I want to keep things simple, but I also want to keep things to the point. So therefore, as we work through the four examples that I have in this video, you'll have a better understanding and confidence to be able to add and subtract any fractions you have. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Now, the first example that I'm gonna work through is very basic. It's pretty easy. It's actually kind of boring easy, but I think it's really important that for me to explain what to do for this problem and why we're gonna do it for this problem. So in this case, I have one fourth plus one fourth. And some of you might already know what this answer is without me actually having to explain it. But I think it's important for us to understand, again, going back to fractions, that what one fourth means. And this is gonna be important, not just for this problem, but for our later problems. So one fourth means one out of four plus one out of four. And even though I like to uh, get away from the visual understanding of adding fractions, I think it's really important that we understand what exactly is going on here. If we have something broken up into four equal parts, what we're looking for is we have one of those fourths and then we have another one of those fourths. And if we're combining these two parts together, one out of four plus one out of four is gonna equal a two out of four. The next thing that we always like to do is we like to simplify the fraction, being we like to have it in reduced terms in the numerator as well as in the denominator. All we're gonna do when we get our answer and we wanna see can it be simplified any further, we're gonna wanna look for numbers that can evenly divide into the numerator as well as into the denominator. What that does is that reduces our fraction to lowest terms. That's still gonna represent that fraction. You can see here at two divided by four, they can be divided by a two on the top as well as a two in the denominator. And what that gives us now is a final answer of one half. So one fourth plus one fourth is equal to one half. And you can also see that visually represented as well. Now, the next example is gonna get to the one where it usually gets pretty confusing for students because when we have common denominators, everything in the world is pretty easy. You apply the operation addition or subtraction to the numerators and keep the denominator the same. But once we include two fractions that do not have common denominators, all of that is kind of thrown out the window. Well, it's kind of thrown out the window in the meaning that we have to find a common denominator because we cannot abide our fractions unless they have that common denominator. So to do that, the easiest and fastest way that we can find the common denominator is just just to multiply our two denominators. So in this case, my LCD, which I'll call it, is going to be a three times four. So three times four is equal 12. Now, what am I gonna do with this 12? Well, what I wanna do is I want to obtain 12 in the denominator over here and the denominator over here. Now, just like I did when I reduced fractions, I divided the same number in the top and the bottom. The reason why I did that is that produced what we call an equivalent fraction. It was the same fraction, it was just in reduced terms. Well, now what we're looking into doing is producing a fraction that has a denominator of 12, but still has the same value. So instead of dividing in this case, what we're actually gonna be doing is multiplying. Now, we can multiply by different numbers because again, we need to obtain 12 in the denominator. So on this left-hand side, I'm gonna multiply by a four. And again, I have to do that in the top and the bottom. Over here, I'm going to multiply by a three. And what I want you to see is in the denominators in both these cases now is going to produce 12. But my numerators have also now changed. I now have a four twelfths minus a three twelfths. But the cool thing is we have a common denominator. So four twelfths minus three twelfths is now just gonna equal a one twelfths. I look to see, is there anything I can divide in the numerator denominator to simplify this? And no, my work here is done. So with a little practice, students can kind of get pretty good with adding and subtracting fractions when they have the same denominator, as well as obtaining new common denominators. But then once we start introducing numbers that aren't fraction, things start to get a little bit tricky because we have to remember what exactly is a fraction and what exactly are our whole numbers. So in this case, what if I wanted to add a two plus one fourth? What do we do here? Two is not even a fraction. So how do we add a whole number to a fraction? Well, in this case, what I'm gonna wanna do is I'm gonna want to convert my whole number to a fraction, and that's actually really easy. All I simply need to do is take a two over one, right? Because two divided by one is just two. Now, all I need to do is find the least common denominator, which again, you could think about is, you could multiply them again, or you could just realize by multiplying this by four, I'm going to obtain four. So the LCD in this case is going to be four. All I need to do is multiply my left-hand fraction by four to obtain a common denominator of four. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna multiply four here on the left-hand side. Now I obtain a eight over four, which again would simplify to two if I wanted to, plus a one over four. This produces a nine fourths, which is an improper fraction, which we're gonna talk about here in the next example. But for my preference, I'm gonna leave just like that. 
Now, the reason why I'm gonna leave it just like that is because I prefer improper fractions. I don't prefer working with mixed numbers. Now, mixed numbers are very helpful because when we're working between our counting numbers and fractions, sometimes it can get pretty confusing. And mixed numbers is exactly that. It's a combination of those two number sets. So in this case, I have three and one half minus a one fourth. And what we want to do now is say, well, so when I have a mixed number, just like when I had an integer, I need to write this in fractional form. So therefore I can subtract it from one fourth. Now it's important to understand what a mixed number is because what this is saying is you have three whole parts and then one half. So really what you have here is a two over two plus a two over two plus a two over two plus a one over two. That is what represents three and one half. You have three holes plus one half. Well, the cool thing about this is what if you added all these up? two, four, six, and seven. So this would be a seven halves minus a one fourth. Now, some of you might be familiar with this and you recognize the trick to take the denominator, multiply it by your whole number, two times three is six, add it to your numerator to get seven, which is the exact same case here, seven halves minus one fourth. The trick that I showed you earlier where you can easily multiply your LCD is not gonna be the best case in this problem because two times four is giving you eight, which again, you could use, but then you're gonna have to simplify your solution. What's always best is to look to see if there is a common multiple that your two denominators share before you multiply it. And if you recognize two and four both divide into four. So therefore my LCD is not eight. My least common denominator is actually four. And all I need to do to obtain four is just multiply by a two over a two. So two times seven is going to be a 14. Two times two is four minus a one fourth. And now I have a common denominator. I can subtract my numerators and that's going to give me a 13 over four. Now let's say that we need to actually rewrite our answer in a mixed number. So if I needed to do that, I like the improper fraction. I have no problems with that. But if we wanna write it as a mixed number, basically what we wanna do is say, well, how many holes can we rewrite this as? So again, remember a hole would be like four over four. Four over four plus four over four would be eight over four, right? And I could do that again. What does this include? This includes 12 over four. Well, again, I'm looking for 13 over four, which is going to be a one fourth. So if I wanted to rewrite this one more time, you can see I have three holes and one fourth, which is going to be a three plus one fourth, which in mixed number form, we just write as a three and one fourth. Now, again, another easier way to kind of look at this is you could just say, well, how many times is four divided into 13? And then what's the remainder? Four divides into 13, three times with the remainder of one. And that's how we write our improper fraction into simplified mixed form. Now, hopefully this video was helpful for you, but I know that you probably need a lot more practice for everything that we just did in this video to really make sense. So I'm gonna check out my other videos that I have on fractions to really dial in your understanding on fractions. Cheers.